Hi, hello there. I am Samia Derdia from Kampala, Uganda, and welcome to my channel. This is the first video in this series of Learning Scratch. Throughout this series, we'll learn by creating fun and interesting projects. Let's start learning. Crash, you can program your own interactive stories, games, and animations, and share your creations with the online community. Scratch helps young people to learn to think creatively, reason systematically, and work collaboratively. The ability to code computer programs is an important part of literacy in today's society. When people learn to code with Scratch, they learn important strategies for solving problems, communicating ideas, and designing projects. Scratch was created by the Lifelong Kindergarten Group at MIT Media Lab and is available for free download at the Scratch website. Now let's go to the computer and explore more about Scratch. Now let's go to the Scratch website. It should be displayed on your screen and I'll put the link in the description as well. Now let's click Join Scratch. It will ask you for the username. I'll put Shona YT, which I'll use throughout this series. Type in your password. Your country. Your date of birth. And it will ask you for a few more details. Now make sure to confirm your Scratch mail in order to enable sharing. Okay, so once I've confirmed my email, I get the share button right here. Now let's go to the elements of Scratch. We have four main elements of Scratch. That is the stage, the sprites, the script, and the programming palette. So the stage is similar to the stage in a play. This is where everything will take place. And the stage can do different backgrounds, which we call backdrops in Scratch, just like in a play. And all your selected backdrops, or backgrounds you may call them, will be displayed in this tab right here. Now to the sprites. The sprites are basically the actors or the main characters of the project. These sprites are programmed to do something in Scratch. Now you can add uh, sprites from the Scratch library. You can move them around, also delete or hide sprites. So the script. So this is what tells the actors what to say or do. And each sprite is programmed with a script. So here I'm just making a small script, um, a small sample script. And scripts in Scratch are created by joining blocks. Now to delete a script, you can just drag and drop it onto the programming palette. And the programming palette is basically the elements used to program the sprite to do or say something. And these sprites must be programmed to carry out every function you want them to perform. And now let's just get a quick overview of the game we're going to create in Scratch. So basically, we're going to have a character and an obstacle from both on opposite ends. And our character will be able to jump when the space key is pressed. And the obstacles will keep on coming every 1.6 seconds from the right to the left. This is just basically using X and Y for movement. Now let's start coding our game. I'm first going to delete the sprite that we have. And I'm going to choose a backdrop from the Scratch library. I'm choosing this blue sky. You can choose any you like. And I'm going to choose my chick as our character. Well, because it's a chick and we said, now we, we agreed, coronavirus will come in as our obstacle. So let's just choose a human instead. 
I'm choosing this Avery walking to give a walking animation. So a sprite has costumes and all of them will be displayed in this costumes tab right here. So Avery basically has four costumes, which are Avery walking A, Avery walking B, Avery walking C, Avery walking D. So these are to create a walking animation. Now let's start coding. So first what we're going to do is create a walking animation. And from this looks tab, I'm going to get the switch costume to Avery walking A block. It's going to make it a little bit big so that it's visible. And from control, I'm going to get a weight block and I'm going to wait 0 0.16 seconds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top block. And I'm going to right click and duplicate and paste it under the weight. And I'm going to go to the top block and duplicate these two. So basically we have four of the two blocks, four pairs of the blocks. Now we're going to switch every walking B, every walking C and D. Now what we're going to do is from the controls section. Okay, so from the control section, I'm going to get a forever loop because we want this to be done forever. Just going to click and see what happens. So now let's get a forever loop. And I'm going to get this if then condition. And from operators we're gonna get this not so we only want this to happen if the space key is not pressed so from sensing i'm gonna get key space pressed so our code basically reads forever if not space uh, key space pressed then we want this code to run and from the events i'm gonna get a when green flag clicked header block So basically we're done with our walking animation. Now let's do our jumping one. So we're gonna use this glide block. So what this basically does is our character will move smoothly to a certain X and Y position. So X is basic, so X is basically like left to right and Y is up to down. So we want it to glide 0 0.4 seconds to x, which is negative 169. And the only thing that's going to change in our jumping animation is the y position. So y, f put 20, and we're going to get another glide block. And this time we want it to glide 0 0.2 seconds to the same x position, which is negative 169. And why we want its original position, which is going to be negative 70. So yeah, there we have our jumping animation. I just clicked it so that we can see what's happening. You can make it 10 de uh, depending on the difficulty of the game. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a sound because I want a jumping sound. So I've deleted the pop sound. And from the search, we're going to get jump. Okay, so we have our jumping sound. And from the sounds category, I'm just going to get the start sound. And I'm going to put it on top of our gliding code. And this, we want this code to run if the space key is pressed. So there we put if not, now if the space key is pressed. So from control, I'm going to get this if then condition and from sensing, I'm going to get key space pressed. So basically, if it senses that the key space is pressed, then it will run this code. Now we want this to check forever. And that is because it will check for like 0 0.1 seconds and will stop the script because it is not 
because it will sense that, yeah, this space key is not pressed. But we wanted to keep on repeating the same thing until the game stops. So we've gra grabbed a forever loop and what we're going to do is we're going to get a one green flag click header, header block. So what happens is when two scripts start with the same header block, they execute parallelly. Okay, so from motion, I'm going to get this go to that's our original position, which is there. Yeah, so basically we're done with our walking and jumping code for our character. I'm just going to test what we've done. Okay, so she's walking and she's jumping. That's great. Now let's program our obstacles. So we've used backdrop sounds and sprites from the library of scratch. Now this time let's upload a custom sprite from the file. I'm just going to hover over this choose a sprite button and I'm going to go to the very top and I get upload a sprite. And here we have this Corona that we're going to that we're going to use. Looks very scary. Um, now it's pretty big. So we're going to reduce its size. I made it 20 and now it's small. Make sure to keep this in mind. You your obstacle should be smaller than your character. And I'm just going to check if Avery is jumping um, above the obstacle. So I've just placed it. She is, but it seems like part of her legs is touching the obstacle. So I'm just going to put about... I'm just going to reduce the size of the corona. Take it a little down. And yes, now she jumps above. Now we're going to put it to the right edge of the screen and start programming our obstacle. So when green flag clicks for motion, we want our obstacle to go to a certain X and Y position, which in my case, which would be 237 and negative 147. Okay, so from control, I'm going to get a forever loop. And forever, it's going to wait 1.6 seconds. So this depends on the frequency of the obstacles, how hard you want your game. And from the control section, I'm going to get this create a clone of myself block. So what this block basically does is what it says is create a clone of myself. It will duplicate the original sprite. So you can... I'm just going to snap it below the weight. And in this create a clone of myself, you can create a clone of other sprites from some other sprite. As you can see, it says Avery walking in the drop down. So we can create a clone of our character. Now let's start a script with when I start as a clone header block. So each of the duplicates will do this. We want it to glide 1.6 seconds to... Uh, the left edge of the screen, which in this case would be negative 237 for the X and Y will be constant, which is negative 147. And from the control, I'm going to get this delete this clone. And yeah, basically, that's what we've done. Now, let us make our obstacles rotate. It's going to be very, very fun. So I'm going to get this when green flag clicked block. So these two scripts of when green flag clicked will be will be executed parallelly. And uh, inside a forever loop, I'm going to get this turn 15 degrees. So as you can see, when I press, when I click that block, our obstacle or Corona is turning 15 degrees towards the right. Now we want it to wait for a very, very short amount of time, which is 0 0.01 seconds, a hundredth of a second. Now I'm just going to duplicate this because we also want our clones to rotate to make the, to make the game more fun and appealing. So I'm going to start with when I start as a clone header block. So basically that is it for programming our obstacles. Now we don't have any such code saying if it's touching corona then stop all now we're going to create that 
cl- that code in Avery Walking. In this forever if space key if key space pressed. Below that, in the forever loop, I'm gonna get another if then condition. And sensing, I'm gonna get touching mouse pointer. Now from the drop drop down, I'm gonna get corona. So if it's touching corona, then from the control we wanna stop all. And that will be the end of the game. Now let's just play it and see what we've done till now. Okay, so this is pretty fun. I'm enjoying now. I intentionally did that. Now, to make it more interesting, let's have score. So score is basically we're going to make a variable of score. So variables are the placeholders for changeable values. These values can be either numbers or text. So I've created a variable score and make sure it's visible on your screen and make sure you had it for all sprites. And now what I'm going to do is in this when I start as a clone and this when green flag clicked is where I'm going to change the variable. So when green flag clicked in Corona, I'm going to set score to zero. And when I start as a clone, before this clone is deleted, I'm going to change the score by one. So you can see as I click this block, our score changes. And well, yeah, basically that's our game. When green flag clicked, the score is zero. And as I jump, it increases. So this is a very, very fun game. Now, of course, you can do a lot of modifications to this. Uh, you can increase or decrease the jumping time to your liking. And you can make the obstacles come faster or you can make the obstacle speed change when the score is at a certain point so you can play around with this as much as you want and like this is the basic basic one we've created now let's just share this project so first i'm gonna save you can save it to your computer but what i'm gonna do is because i have the share button i'm gonna share Let's just click on it. And basically, yes, you have shared it. Now you can change the title, which I'm going to do. And p other people can give comments and also remix. So you can give instructions. I'm just going to type in press space key to jump, avoid the coronavirus. And now I'm just going to type in good luck. Notes and credits. I'm going to put at Shona YT. And you can copy the link and share it in the comment section down below. Congratulations! We've made our first game in Scratch and we've learned how to change the backdrop, how to use inbuilt sprites, upload custom sprites and clone the sprites. We also learned how to use sounds from the sound library and explored a little bit about variables. I hope you all have enjoyed and learned something new today. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section down below and please share a link to your project as well. This is not a sponsored video. Please like and subscribe to my channel, turn on the post notification so you're the first one to get updated whenever I post a new video. And please follow me on my Instagram at SamihaDaradia. And don't forget to share this video. Until next time. Learn, code, and share. Thank you. Bye-bye.